Lethbridge East MLA Nathan Newdorf is our guest in studio here today. He's here to discuss provincial politics and issues that impact us right here in southwestern Alberta. Nathan, welcome back to BCN. Thank you, Hal. Great to be here. Yeah, it's good to have you here as well, Nathan, but during some trying times, COVID-19, a lot of Alberta is in lockdown, a lot of the country and even the world right now, it's impacting things. Uh, the First Minister's meeting in Ottawa, Premier Jason Kenney was supposed to head there to talk with Prime Minister Justin Trudeau about a possible financial aid package to help us here in Alberta. How much money are we talking about? Well, I, th I think uh, he, the Premier went there to talk to the Prime Minister. Obviously, that meeting didn't quite take place in the way we would have liked to have seen, and we wish the Prime Minister and his wife uh, the best of health and a quick recovery. But uh, to, to understand uh, the, just the, how they want to do, uh, respond to economically to the, the stimulus, what we need here in the short term and what we need here in the long term. Some things have been announced, uh, and, and it's a good start. But I think those conversations still need to take place so we can totally lay out the plan going forward. Bottom line, let's talk numbers though. How much are we looking for? Two and a half, three billion dollars here in Alberta? What do we need? Well, I, that remains to be seen, to, to be completely honest. I know uh, in terms of equalization, we were looking for that captive lifted. That number was 2.4 billion to help with uh, the economy. COVID-19 is something a little bit different. Obviously, we're looking to help uh, those employed, those self-employed, those who have to stay home from work. So how do we address that? And I think that's where we're looking for the federal government to take a lead. Uh, they have so far committed about $11 billion for the country. Uh, we need to see exactly how much of that will land up in Alberta. So how are we gonna help a lot of business owners and individuals who have to self-isolate for those 14 days, however long the period is, if they have COVID-19? Yeah, if they have COVID-19, the recommendation at this point is to self-isolate for 14 days uh, just to make sure that the incubation period has passed before they come out uh, and are in contact with other people of the public. And two weeks without a paycheck can, can really stress a lot of people. So I know that the uh, mandatory one-week waiting time for employment insurance has been waived. But for those who are self-employed, obviously we need to look at something a little different. Not sure if that's been fully decided yet, but those are conversations that we need to have. How about some help for business owners who've been impacted by $30 per barrel for oil right now? It's crazy. Yeah. And I know with the budget, you were hoping for maybe around $50 a barrel, yeah. maybe next year or a couple of years from now, $63 a barrel. We're talking $30 a barrel here, Nathan. I know. It's been drastic uh, where the price was last fall or, or the peak last, last year to now it's almost in half. Uh, obviously, drastic, uh, drastic measures need to be taken. Does that uh, mean more cuts? Uh, at this point, the Premier has indicated that is not the direction that we go. To, to destabilize further our economy and uh, our public sector, how does that help anybody? I think that uh, we want to uh, get rid of that uncertainty. We want to add some stimulus. We want to add jobs to the economy. We want to we stabilize things and get rid of any fear and uncertainty. Some of those decisions obviously are yet to be made with the Premier having been in Ottawa recently as well as some of the key ministers. Those conversations will be taking place this week. We will be doing uh, some direct steps to help those in Alberta. A lot of people I've been speaking with as well in southwestern Alberta are concerned with the fact that there are cutbacks, especially when it comes to the frontline healthcare professionals, a lot of our nurses, at a time when we have COVID-19 running rampant. Like the timing couldn't be worse. How do you respond to that? Well, first of all, uh, there haven't been any cutbacks at this point in time in healthcare. The, the budget has actually gone up by $200 million this year from last. And we haven't made any of those changes. Those changes are set to take place March 31st, moving forward into the new fiscal year. Again, no changes for outright layoffs for nurses. There is a little bit, a very, very tiny bit, one third of the natural retirement rate of nurses uh, to maybe not fill those positions. Again, this is not about reducing the workforce. This is about uh, optimization, efficiencies, and any savings that can be found in the system will be poured right back into frontline healthcare. So we do not want that, uh, that rumor, that false narrative to go out that we are getting rid of positions. We absolutely are not. We want to stabilize our healthcare. So you're saying there's some misinformation going out there right now? I believe so, yes. By another party, perhaps? A nameless um, party? Uh, I, all, I'm, all I'm in control of is the messages my, of course. my office puts forward and my party, and we try to respond to that. And it, it is difficult with uh, every rumor able to go on, on Twitter or, or whatever social media. Uh, things can take fire. But I, I just ask people to verify the source. Verify the source before they go too far. There's lots of irons in the fire, and there's lots of different perspectives 
out there to try to get uh, public opinion or emotion on different people's side, but we want to have we want to have serious, helpful conversations. Uh, not not ones that aren't based on facts. The NDP opposition actually came up with a suggestion to put an income replacement fund in place to help self-employed people or anyone not able to access employment insurance funds for anyone who may have to self-quarantine. Mm -hmm. Your thoughts on that? I actually think it's a reasonable suggestion. Uh, obviously, I'm not in charge of that discussion or that decision, but I would be happy to see that decision and that discussion take place. Uh, obviously, the, the Premier... Uh, the Minister of Finance, the Minister of Labour and Immigration, as well as a number of others should be part of that. But again, if it's a good idea and worth merit, I think we'll have that conversation. Now, you have some recent appointments as well you want to share with our viewers that you're yeah. celebrating. What are they? Yeah, the, a number of uh, appointments. The first one being I have recently been named the chair to the Standing Committee for Alberta's Economic Futures. So that's, uh, again, just recognition of Lethbridge and area and that we have a voice and uh, a place to play in the Alberta's economic future, uh, particularly with our agricultural sector, tourism, food processing. We are seeking that recognition and I'm very proud to have this position on behalf of Lethbridge and represent the people there. The second one I was named uh, the chair of a provincial task force on student transportation or busing. And uh, obviously, I think everybody in Lethbridge and in Southern Alberta knows that student busing is pretty important. A lot of cost, uh, a lot of kilometers, and nobody wants kids on the buses for hours and hours to and from school. So we're really setting forward a, a task force to, to talk to pertinent stakeholders, have that discussion. How do we do this better? And I'm really looking forward to, the, to that again. And again, that recognition goes to Lethbridge. Lethbridge School Division 51, the Holy Spirit School Division in Lethbridge. Their collaborative efforts for years have set them as the benchmark across a province. It's their hard work that's being recognized here. Uh, so I'm not taking any personal uh, credit for that, but I'm very pleased on their behalf to take that model forward as something that the province can learn from. Now, the supervised consumption site is still a big issue here in our city, as it is in many cities across Alberta here. And the government released a report talking about some concerning numbers as to the effectiveness of some of these sites. Associate Minister of Health uh, Jason Lewan noted the near absence of referrals for treatment and recovery. And he pointed out to the Lethbridge South Country Treatment Centre at only 45% capacity, so a whole lot of unused beds. Yeah. What really needs to change in the approach so that the people who need the help get the help? Well, I think the approach, uh, we've said it before, needs to be focused on treatment and recovery uh, and not strictly on harm reduction. That is a step in, in the whole process. But we do need to see that the, the stream of people moving towards treatment and recovery is happening. Obviously, uh, that report highlights that that was not happening in all cases. We need to see that happening. I will be having a meeting with uh, the Associate Minister very, very soon, I, I, maybe even this week, uh, to further discuss not just Lethbridge but sites across the province. We need, and the people in Lethbridge have been waiting for a long time for two things. One is validation that they've been heard, which I think this report does. It does share the concerns and the direction we need to move. And the second thing they've been waiting for is a, a response. Now that we know this, where are we going from here? What is happening? And that's what I want to ask. What is going to happen? Will it be moved? Will it be shut down? A lot of people want to know. A lot of people want to know, and I don't have all those answers. Again, I'm not uh, part of th that final decision, although I have input into it. I will be speaking with the Associate Minister about my thoughts on, on how we address that uh, for the, the most significant healthy impact, not only for those uh, individuals that are using that site, but also for the businesses and communities surrounding it. I think there's some very uh, clear recommendations that we can move forward on. I hope to finalize those with the Associate Minister soon and share them with Lethbridge. There was also an audit involving the supervised consumption site. I think that's prudent. With some interesting numbers too. There's some interesting numbers. Uh, I haven't seen the final re report yet on that audit, so I, I don't want to comment to get ahead of things. Um, uh, Arches has been extremely cooperative with uh, the members doing that audit, and we'll let the numbers speak for themselves, and I won't speculate on, on what they may or may not show. So the Lethbridge Chamber of Commerce recently had an event. Some of the ministers were in town, and you joined them as well. Yeah. What were some of the concerns you've been hearing from the business community here in Lethbridge? I think predominantly there's, there's two things. One is uh, the, or the recognition of our agricultural sector. We all know that oil and gas is the, the, the number one economy in Alberta. We've, we've known that for a long time, uh, wherever people sit on that issue. But those down here, we're, we're focused on agriculture. 
So they would like to see a little bit more of that plan, uh, that recognition and stimulus for, for that industry and support for that industry. So I think that was clearly heard by the Minister of Agriculture and the Minister of Finance. And the second one was uh, Lethbridge did not have uh, very much uh, significant capital dollars spent. Uh, there is a continuation of the, the promise for the $11 million for seniors supportive housing. So that's a good thing. Another there, bridge? Uh, that is not in, in this at all. Right. So, Okay. Again, there's been miscommunication on that. That was a, a platform uh, promised by the NDP. Mm -hmm. It was not put on their capital plan, so there was not honored in, in our capital plan. Mm -hmm. uh, that is something we need to discuss. We do have the Minister of Transportation committed to come down and drive Highway 3 uh, before summer as we plan for that expansion and how we're going to tackle that. At the twinning, right? The twinning, yeah. uh, which the bridge is part of. Right, that's part of that whole that whole package. But there's sections to the east, sections to the west, through Crowsness Pass and the bridge. How do we tackle that? Uh, you, you know the the old adage: How do you eat, eat an elephant one bite at a time? <laughs> but beyond that, there are needs for Lethbridge. Um, we have been very very fortunate in the past decade, uh, huge amounts of provincial dollars, federal dollars, and private investment. Uh, in and we've we've been very very fortunate for that. This year is a down year. Uh, I need Lethbridge to know that I continue to advocate. That is significant. We are willing to play our part in the province. We do see the bigger picture and the context that as we step back, there will be communities that, that go a year or two without. Uh, we recognize that. There are still things we need. We need to move ahead with uh, some airport renovations and we need to move ahead with Exhibition Park to support our ag sector and, a, and attract that private investment from outside the province that we're dearly looking for. So you don't have the minister portfolio, Nathan, but as a backbencher, how often do you get the opportunity to address the issues at the ledge and bring them to the premier, uh, you know, in Edmonton? Uh, I have that opportunity with ministers. Once or twice a week? Like how often? Ministers, I'm speaking to ministers every day, to tell you the truth. Uh, and often, ironically, it's the bumping into them in the hallway or in the, the cafeteria, so to speak, or at another meeting where you get five minutes to have that one-on-one uh, -on -one time. Uh, there is time within the legislature uh, sitting itself. QP, there, right? What's well, QP, QP, you have to sit in your chair, <laughs> but uh, uh, Committee of the Whole or at breaks the, where you get the opportunity to speak to them about some of these uh, significant issues. The Premier obviously is, uh, has, is a little bit more challenging to get time with him, but he is uh, amazing in his commitment and his knowledge level of each region and what matters to us. Uh, but, I mean, again, this week he's in Ottawa, and in the past you've seen him take time to go to Washington or Texas or New York, uh, spending a, a considerable amount of effort on Alberta's behalf for our greater economy. Has he been tested for COVID-19? Uh, all that traveling, man. It's, all that traveling. You know, that's uh, dangerous. It, it's possible. I think, right? uh, I think he's been in, in Canada since the outbreak. I think he's been very careful and aware of that. Uh, if someone is more dedicated to the, the time spent in office, I don't know who that is. He literally spends uh, 14 to 18 hours a day, if not more, working on behalf of all Albertans for our better future. Some people I speak with across southern Alberta are not happy with some of the park closures or even the partial park closures or handing it over to private enterprise, businesses to run the parks. How do you respond to that? Because, I mean, the busy summer season is coming up, the camping season, and we like to camp here in Alberta. We absolutely we do. So there's a couple things. This needs to be looked at from the big lens of uh, just budget optimization and efficiency. Uh, there are only 10 parks in the entire province that are going to be closed. And predominantly because they were used so little, like less than 40 people in a year, some less than 20 people in an entire year. So that we're not taking the, those parks out of circulation. There are 10 further parks that are going to have partial closures where where they may not be overnight camping, but they'll still have day use. Again, for the same reason, optimization uh, to use the limited resources we have, officers and maintenance in parks that, that dearly need it. Uh, there are further 164 that we want to continue to be operated as parks, but we're seeking partnerships with municipalities or First Nations groups or private operators to run, again, this is not about uh, making a profit. This isn't about even cost recovery. People should be able to enjoy their parks without having to worry about the cost to that. Uh, this is about optimization and realizing that l some local, local needs and local insight into these areas 
far more effective than, than the provincial force. And again, this represents like 0.3% of the land mass of all Alberta parks. What about Park Lake Provincial Park? So that's one of the that's 160, very close to us here. one of the 164. So it's still meant to be open, and we're just seeking some partnership to help manage that. Again, using the resources uh, in areas that we need to, and we want to see people use Park Lake. But again, that's where local interest can really, uh, really address that need and partner with the provincial government and make sure that people have the experience they want, and we're able to maintain it and utilize it in a way that that doesn't cost again Alberta taxpayers undue uh, amounts of money. Lethbridge East MLA Nathan Newdorf. Thanks for joining me in studio today. Always a pleasure. Thanks, Hal.